Dear Heavenly Father, in your name this morning, we ask you to bless us with your, with your reign and give us some um, understanding, wisdom, and knowledge and love. Father God, we're living in a wicked, wicked world and we know thy coming is near. Yeah. Help us, Lord, to prepare ourselves and know the Sunday Lord is, is, is right behind the door, right by the corner. Lord, please prepare us. Help us to cooperate with you. Help us to remove all types of sin, um, wickedness, and selfishness from our hearts. Amen. Help us to discover where the roots of, of sin is, lies in our hearts to remove it. Please bless us this morning. Help the, 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 the brethren to have understanding of um, the message and put them into practice. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. I would invite you to go to First Corinthians chapter ten in verse eleven. All these things happen unto them for examples, and they are written for our admonition, upon whom the ends of the world are come. The Bible tells us here that things that happened in the past is, is an example for us. It's, it's, it's a way of teaching us what's going to take place in the future because history will repeat itself. Now, any one of you believe in Sister White? Have you ever heard Sister White? Wait. Okay, amen. Amen. All right. Now, the prophet says in um, Council to Parents, Teachers, and Students, page 379 and 380. I'm not going to read the whole page, but uh, just a paragraph a few sentences. She says, there is a study of history that is not to be condemned. Sacred history was one of the studies in the schools of the prophets. And the record of his dealing with the nations portrays the footsteps of Jehovah. So today we are to consider the dealings of God with the nations of the earth. We are to see in history the fulfillment of prophecy. Such study will, be, will, will give broad, comprehensive views of life. So basically she's saying that history, for you to understand prophecy in the Bible, you have to study history. Yeah. And history is very important. Amen? Yeah. They go yeah. important. They go hand in hand. Without history, we cannot confirm that prophecy was fulfilled. We need to study history. Now, let's go to the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 1 and verse 9. I'm just going to lay a foundation for the sermon so we can have a better understanding of the message. If you build a house without a foundation, you know it's going to fall down. So foundation is very important. Ecclesiastes chapter 1 and verse 9 and 10. The Bible says, The thing that hath been, it is that which shall be, and that which is done, is that which shall be done. And there is no what? New thing under the sun. Is there anything whereof it may be said? See, this is new. It hath been already a whole time, which was before us. Mm -hmm. So basically, everything that happens before in the past, there's nothing new. There's nothing new again. So it's a matter of whom we present in the stories. Two witnesses is established. Right. The thing is established. So two witnesses here tells us that history will repeat. Do you know why it is that? Because men mm -hmm. do a mistake, and it's the only animal who makes the mistake over and over again. Amen. <coughs> Amen. <coughs> now we're going to go to a parable that Jesus um, gave. We're going to go straight to the master teacher, Jesus Christ. Okay. Now let's go to the book of Luke, New Testament, Luke, chapter 21. <coughs> because remember, the sermon is talking about the sprinkling of the latter rain. All of us here, we, we are waiting for the latter rain, but we need to know what the latter rain is. Amen. Luke, chapter 21, and verse 29 to 33. What's that first? 
chapter 21, verses 29 through 33. If you're there, amen. 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 Jesus says himself, And he spake to them a parable, Behold of the fig tree, and all the trees, when they now show forth, ye see and know of your own self that summer is what? Near. Now. Not at hand. It's near. Amen. So likewise, ye, when ye see this, these things come to pass, ye know, ye come to pass, I'm sorry, know ye that the kingdom of God is nigh at hand. Amen. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass away till all be fulfilled. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. So Jesus says that when you see the fig tree and all the trees, when you see the uh, it starts shooting forth, you know that summer is what? Near. Amen? So we want to know what is summer in the Bible, what it represents, and we want to know what caused the tree to bud, to start shooting forth. What, what caused a tree to shoot forth? Any, anyone who deals with agriculture, Planting. The sun and nutrients. The sun bring fruit forth. Yes, okay, she said the sun. And what caused the tree to, to sh start shooting forth? What caused it? Rain. Water. Rain? Amen. Okay. Rain. Remember the, the, the Rain. title? Rain. Are you just saying that because of the title? No. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, I hear you. Amen. 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 So, so, so the rain caused the, the, the tree to shoot forth. So we want to know in the Bible. If that's so, let's go to Isaiah 55. Isaiah chapter 55, verse 9 to 11. If you're there, amen. Isaiah chapter 55, verse 9 to 9. Verse 9 to 11. Amen. Yeah. Amen. The Bible says, For as the heaven is for as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain cometh down, and the snow from heaven returneth not thither, but watereth the earth, and maketh it, it bring forth in what? In bud. bud. Amen. That it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So the rain here is the one that caused the tree to shoot forth, to bud. Yes, the sun is involved. Amen? Amen. So the rain, we're focusing on the rain. Yes, the rain caused the tree to shoot forth. So Jesus says, once you see the tree start shooting forth, you know that summer is near. So therefore, the tree shooting forth, which season do you think that tree is? Start shooting forth. Spring. What comes before? Spring. Spring. Amen? Amen? Spring comes before summer. So. So we want to know what summer is according to the Bible. What summer is. So let's go to, to the book of Proverbs. Proverbs 10 and verse 5. The book of wisdom. The book of Proverbs chapter 10 and verse 5. Amen. Amen. Proverbs 10 and verse 5. The Bible says, He that gathereth in summer is a wise son, Amen. but he that sleepeth in harvest is a son that causes shame. So the Bible here tells us that summer is harvest. The time we, 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 we harvest is in summertime. Amen? Amen? So summer is harvest. Just keep that in mind. Summer is harvest. Harvest is summer. Let's go to the book of Jeremiah, chapter 8. Jeremiah, chapter 8, in verse 20. Jeremiah, chapter 8, in verse 20. We're going to have a sermon slash Bible study. Amen. We want to learn. We want to not going through emotional feelings. We just want to know the Word of God and use them to practice. The Bible says in Jeremiah chapter 8, verse 20, the harvest is past, the what? Summer, Summer is ended, ended, and we are not, not saved. saved. Amen. So, so we have another clue here. The harvest is summer, another witness that summer is harvest. And summer is ended, and we are not saved. When are men not saved? It has to do with the end of the world. If you are found one thing, you are not saved. For which close on you with a heart of wickedness, you are not saved. So summer is the end. Now, let's go to our last witness. Let's go to the book of Matthew 13. Matthew 13 
in verse 37 to 39. Matthew 13, verses 37 to 39. You write down these notes and study for yourselves. You have to be like the Bereans. Whatever I'm saying, don't just take my word. You go home and you study yourself to see if, if, if the word of God is true. Yeah. If my word is so true. The Bible says in Matthew 13, verses 37 to 39, He entered and said unto them, He that soweth the good seed is the Son of Man. Yeah. The field is the world, the good seed are the children of the kingdom. Yeah. But the tares are the children of the wicked one. Yes. The enemy that sowed them is the devil. The harvest is what? The, the end of the world. And the reapers are the angels. So wow. harvest, summer, is the end of the world. So when Jesus says, when you see the tree start shooting forth, you know that the end of the world is near. Mm -hmm. Is near. So we want to know if the fig tree start should be poor. So we can know the time we are living. Alright? We don't need to depend on the news. We don't need to depend on the newspaper to tell us that we're living in the other world. We need to depend on the word of God and the spirit of prophecy for us to um, have faith and understand that we're living in the last days. So summer is the is the end of the world. And who are the reapers? Who are the ones who's supposed to divide the tares and the weeds? Who are the ones that does the division? The angels. Now, is he talking about literal angels? Is he talking about men, um, you know, like the shepherd rods, so to speak, uh, uh, who claim that they come and, you know, to, to divide? No. No. Which angels? Which angels? First, second, and third angel. The, the three angels' messages are the one that caused the division, the gospel. The gospel uh, uh, produced three, um, I'm sorry, not three, two classes of worship. The everlasting gospel is designed to bring a division. Jesus says, I come not to, to bring peace, but what? To divide, bring a sword, to divide. What does a sword do? It brings and it, it divides, separates. So the three angels' messages designs to bring division. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. Division. So the angels are the reapers. The message. Now, we're going to go into deep waters. Now, um... I know we don't have the spirit of prophecy with us here, but um, I'm going to read a quote from Sister White, The Great Controversy. I know you, you uh, brethren, are familiar with The Great Controversy. Amen? Amen? And it's a great book to read, to study. In Great Controversy, page 611 and 612, she says, The great work of the gospel is not to, is not to close with less manifestation of the power of God, of God than marks its opening. The prophecies which were fulfilled and the outpouring of the former reign at the opening of the gospel, which is Pentecost, the early reign, right? The, the former reign at the opening of the gospel are again to be fulfilled at the latter reign at its close. So therefore, she's making a connection with the early reign experience history with the latter reign experience history. They're going to repeat. So for us to know what's going to happen at the end, we need to study what? We need to study the early reign. Yeah. History. We need to go to the Bibles and, and, and study what happened there in order for us to know what's going to happen in the latter, latter days. Amen? Amen? She goes on to say, Here are the times of refreshing to which the Apostle Peter looked forward when he said, Repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out. When the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord, and he shall send Jesus. So the refreshing is the rain. Amen? And he says that we need to repent. She says we need to repent. She's quoting Peter. That we need to repent, therefore and be converted. That your sins may be what? Blotted out. Because we're living in, a, in, a, in, in the day of judgment. Okay? Now, the refreshing is the, is the rain. Now, before Pentecost, Pentecost was the outpouring, without measure, the outpouring of the rain. But before the outpouring of Pentecost, there had to be a sprinkling fire. And I'm going to prove it through the Word of God. The Word of God says in John chapter 20, let's go to the book of John chapter 20.